All right, guys, welcome back to Rob's Arcade. I am your host, as always, the best dang smuggler you know, Rob French. Hanging out with some more Star Wars content because coming up this Tuesday is May the 4th, and I just want to bring you guys as much Star Wars content as I can. And today we're going to be hanging out with my cousin Holden. And we're going to be just talking Yo. about some Star Wars, man, because, uh, you know, I kind of feel like actually even though we are from somewhat different generations, we kind of hit Star Wars at that same point because I didn't always grow up a fan. Like a lot of my friends growing up in the 80s and 90s were hardcore Star Wars fans. And for me, it just didn't resonate right away. And it wasn't until, like, I guess the early 2000s when all this stuff started, like, resurfacing mm -hmm. that I got into it. I kind of feel like that's when you got into it as well. That's, um, yep, that's, that's right. That's exactly the time frame, I would say. I mean, and I do remember, I do recall, I want to say the first time I ever watched Star Wars was at your house. Like, we watched it together, you explained it to me. And I was just like, this is sick. It's just like oh, this that's alternate cool. universe. Yeah, right. it's just this alternate universe that it's so crazy and just everything about it is just what's not to like about it. Yeah, Space well, you know, it's, 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 that's exactly right. What is not to like about it? But like I said, for me, I didn't really get into it uh right away and that's because actually <laughs> there was a kid i knew who was really uh uptight about his action figures and um it was like to me like why why have these things if you're not going to play with them you know like you have gi joes you have all these other things and it just like i don't know because he was so uptight i was always just like you know kind of I think it's F Star Wars, F your action figures. Right. And, hey, like, gas, that's kind of where, Star like, Star Wars <laughs> fell with me. It was like this so. stupid toy line I couldn't play with <laughs> because of this yeah. jerk friend of mine. Uh, but, like I said, as I kind of started revisiting, I used to work at a movie store and I actually found, um, I know it's been a rough six months. Uh, the, we'll get him this time. I can feel the it. video, uh, cassettes no, no, no. of, um, about what happens the Wars original over. trilogy special Honestly? edition mm -hmm. and I, really about it. I revisited it like you know through vhs but i got sector. to watch it um it was like in the, the full screen version not the wide screen travel. version um, but i got to see it for like the first time in forever as like <laughs> the prequels the were getting ready to come out as a soldier. and i was just like what I what was i thinking what free. what like i said what is not to like about this that actually sounds and really uh nice. It's one of those things like I, I you know, I, I bought the special edition full screen, widescreen DVD. I think I bought more versions of Star Wars than any other version of any other film uh, out there. And it's just, you know, now with all the different animated series, right now I'm playing Battlefront 2. And there's just like so many stories that are told within this, like you said, this whole new universe. And uh, it's just amazing. I was watching some specials today. You know, this is something that's been going on since like 19. You know, it came out in 77, but you got to think like There's Lucas started putting this in together like probably like what, 74 or 75. And uh, just crazy to think it's still. It still holds. It's it still holds value. It's still people yeah. are still, you know, younger generations are always gonna. Know hear about it and want to know about it regardless right. of the time frame i mean even like parker who's like 13 now like he's all I mean, he wants to watch he knows force awakens and some of the new ones right that right. came out like when he's like you know a teenager you know a young kid so he watches all those he's like these are awesome then wants to go see the history and kind of exactly. restart see exactly. all the older ones but um which you you started with the older ones you know i actually started with the first one i ever saw was Revenge of the Sith was essentially was like the newer right. one at the time. Um, then I had to go back and watch them all. So, um, yeah, another another sweet thing about Star Wars, definitely my, one of my favorites. Will be is, in the uh, Overseer's Lego Star Wars video game. Level. That is mm. like we need to find a one of the best there. video games. I, I, I think to this day, I still have for game. Yeah, I think it's the best. That is a good call on that. That is uh, definitely 
one of uh, the best games. Uh, that so exists. sick, right? Well, um, it's it's like all of Star Wars. It's all the fun you want out of Lego, and it's such a mm -hmm. great collaboration between the two. But I've I've talked about Lego in the past and how, and this is going to be like a little side. Uh, note from Star Wars, but how it's able to function in a world of video games and all these other mediums that are going on right now, and how do you stay relevant and how do you stay current? And you know, instead of like falling to the side because of video games, because of Xbox, because of GameCube, because of PlayStation, this is something now that we have that is a you know a collaboration between the two, and it just takes it to a whole other level. And it's like you know now Lego and video games are uh, like working together, and it's just insane to um, along with this stormtrooper squad. Like I remember actually working at Toys R Us and, and and getting back into Lego at that time, and just thinking like, man, I, you know, I'm, this is gonna be really sad if you know, like Lego disappears Slice because this. of video games, and yeah. all of a sudden there's like this huge surge of Lego inspired, like Harry Potter, oh, yeah. uh, just all these different. You know, Lego video games, and they, like I said, they are so much fun getting to build um, different vehicles and being all the different characters. And then, what was like the, I guess, the function where you could, I guess, like swap? Oh, yeah. Well, the thing is, who you could, like, you, like, you had this, especially in Lego Star Wars, like, you had, you had to, like, there were certain parts of it which the cool part about it was you could not only, like, kind of learn the story, and it basically broke the whole story down in Get Lego down. form, like, throughout the first three movies right you were able to like find pieces of a certain yeah. ship like lego pieces and then build yeah, your ship yeah. and you had to go you know you could customize it you could go back into the game and get all these pieces of the ship right you couldn't and you didn't see or you had to unlock like jar jar binks who could jump extra high to get this one piece you had to unlock players and go back and play the level as a different character to get these Disable, spaceship pieces and then yeah build customize your ship it was crazy. And I want to play right now. I'm just like, man, he's got something in the hallway right now. It's insane. And I'm surprised I'm not dead. I'm about to die right now, I think, though. Got the um, heavy on me. Oh, there we go. I remember, too, you remember Rebel Strike, that demo that you gave me? I used to play that, and I, I played that so much, I became, like, oh, a uh, of that. Rogue, level. um... Needed to save him. Rogue Squadron. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Definitely. And there was like two levels. There were two levels pretty much. It was like uh, you as Luke Skywalker basically like getting to that point where you had to... Um, wow, there's just like a mountain. I'm sorry right now of like these... Oh, you when, you, when you see this part, there's just a mountain of stormtroopers that I'm just like looking at right now. I don't know how I managed to... Uh... <laughs> it's going to be hilarious when I get to go back and see what you're doing while we're doing this because it's probably completely different than what I'm doing right now. Oh my gosh, yeah. Oh yeah, but uh that um the, that the, rebel strike. Dude, yeah, so good. And that was that was actually uh I'm going to take actual pause right here and actually I'll just kind of like look around with some some of these guys, some of these fans. Oh, this is so cool right here getting to look up at these wedge ships of the uh the empire. And that's one of these things like about this game that like I always go back to um Battlefront. This is actually like why I think I wanted a PlayStation 4 to begin with, just because of how cool this game is. But it's just it's one of those things like I start playing and then you start looking around and it's like, oh my gosh, wait, over there in the corner there's this. And oh, over there there's that th oh and it's just so much fun. Like even like now, you just kind of feel like you're actually walking around in that in that universe. But that game that you're mentioning is the game that really um got me into uh, the Star Wars video games and part of the Star Wars universe because it was like, you know... Um, oh wait, what's there something over here I gotta interact with? Oh wait, so... Where is this thing I gotta interact with? Um, it's just one of those things like... It... It, it brought more... Oh, it was more of like an interaction, not just like a game, but it was like just more of an interaction with the universe right. because it was like you felt like you were Luke Skywalker uh, playing that game. There's something I'm supposed to be. Oh, eliminate. 
Man, yeah, and see, the thing is, I need to go back and play because it's been a long time. Um, but, there's Sai, man, I can't even remember, man. It's, you know, on the GameCube controller, it's like, that's like, people forget the GameCube controller, but that was one of the most uniquely oh, it was designed controllers. it was controllers. so good. It was so good, yeah. absolutely. Um, and I remember you had to use the C-Stick a lot, and you had to do all this special idea. stuff, and, uh, I'm gonna have to go yeah, back and play it now. I'm talking about yeah. it, it makes me want to go play it, but... Just, I remember there was this one, yeah, that level where you had to do that, and then you had to like get inside of a ship, okay. and then once we'll you get inside you of the ship as Until the person, then, then you, you sight, it, then the you next level is just like you in the spaceship, just like trying to shoot you know, certain right. areas. Do right, this right, stuff. right. Just, you went from like flying to actually being a person, on. and that's kind of where Battlefront yeah. like is. It's the next. Get ready, Del. Um, he'll put up a fight. I'm looking forward to it. The next part of that, and I'm kind of like actually right now. You talk about like. Uh, getting into a ship, so like right now I've just like infiltrated from taking down stormtroopers, so now I'm like wearing a stormtrooper outfit. Mm -hmm. um, so now I'm like walking around, and I think this is actually what I was looking for. Um, yeah, here we go. This is actually what I was looking for uh, earlier today, because this is just actually just kind of walking around as a stormtrooper and interacting with this whole stormtrooper wow. base. And uh, this is is very much like kind of like walking around the Disney World and the uh, the Black Spires outpost and uh, Galaxy's Edge, Batu, all that stuff they have going on. Just a lot of detail. Uh, you know, whoever put this together was just like you know left left nothing to the imagination. And it's it's um, you know it's it's funny. So a lot of times, like okay, we're, you know, we're talking about that that the uh, the, the Rogue Squadron game. And it's for its time, absolutely beautiful. Like, it's it's so perfect. But they kind of leave a little bit to the imagination, and that's very true. With like I think a lot of old video games, like if you really want to tell the whole story, you kind of have to fill in some of the blanks for yourself, right. you know. Yeah. Uh, but then when you get to something like this, there's really no filling in the blanks, and it's exactly what you kind of imagined in your head growing up, and I kind of mentioned that with Mortal Kombat, you know, the first Mortal Kombat, second Mortal Kombat, you kind of have this imagination in your head of like what these characters are doing and what's going on with all these fights, and it's basically what you get today with like Mortal Kombat mm -hmm. 11 and like what you actually get to play and what you see in the new movies and all of that, so it uh, it's just it's just really amazing, and I, it, it's, you know, the, I, I feel like the, the people who grew up like myself fans of this are, are the, the people who are working on it, you know, today. Like yeah. Said, you know, the, and, and people like Parker, who are 13 and, and what have you, who are growing up with it now, are going to be the future generation, you know, carrying it to the next level and taking it, you know, VR, and like, who knows what the next whole thing oh, is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's always crazy to me, too, is just like the video games that, you know... Parker's first video game was like an Xbox 360. You know what I mean? It's just like this stuff, the graphics and everything. Mm -hmm. It's just so nuts. And then it's... <laughs> Look at this. A uh, which I will say, though, we have played some uh, Lego Star Wars on the GameCube. No real pilot uh, would ever and fly one and of it's these. One of, it's just, mm -hmm. it's a game that does not get old. And it's like such a good no. multiplayer game. It's just like Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan just together. And it's just so sick. It's, it's such a good two-person game because they're always in pairs. Yeah, you know, guys are always rolling in pairs. So, um, I'm actually looking at a, a cloud car um, right now from uh, Star Wars, and it was one of my favorite cars to play in in Rogue Squadron. And that was another cool thing too about Rogue Squadron was that like it wasn't just the X-wing, it wasn't just the Millennium Falcon. They had so many cool vehicles that you could maneuver and pilot in that universe. And uh, it's the same here. Like, there's just so much you can take control of. And uh, I think you're exactly right when you when you talked about the controller for the the GameCube because there was just nothing nothing better than that I think at the time and I kind of feel like uh, the PlayStation and the Xbox controller now today are kind of hybrids of what the GameCube um, kind of put out even with the 64 like the 64 was kind of a solid controller. And, Which uh, I actually like those controllers. Like it, it, some for some people they're awkward, but like I just uh, I was a huge fan of GameCube controllers. Yeah. The uh, N Nintendo, I think they knew. Like I mean, like I mean, come on, they they kind of built the very first like little D-pad, two-button controller, and I kind of feel like they uh, 
they know it feels good. They know it feels comfortable. I have a question for you. All right. Who is your favorite all-time Jedi? Ooh, that's tough. Favorite all-time Jedi. I'm gonna go with Yoda. Oof. Good answer. Yeah, I'm gonna go with Yoda, man. He's just like you know, such a cool character, and like you know, so many of them like. Like you could go Luke and what have you, but like they all have like their moments where they kind of like folly and another mm -hmm. Obi Wan's another good one. I think Obi Obi Wan could be another good, just true yeah. to it, true to that whole like Jedi world. But there's so many of them that like either get taken out before Who their time and can't I hold their own or fall to the dark side. And uh, yeah, Yoda was just a cool character. He was like, and it's like as a kid too. Like that was another character. Um, like. I kind of mentioned uh, in another video that like Ewoks and the droids, even before I got into Star Wars, were always really fun to watch and really cool to like, you know, like you, you want the Ewok toy, you want the, the droids, like they're just cool to look at, yeah. they're cool, to, they're, even if you don't like Star Wars, basically. And uh, same with Yoda, like he was just a cool, fun little character, um, and I just really always enjoyed... Uh, the Yoda, the Yoda character. Oh wow, we're gonna get a big wide shot here of this little base. The Yoda is pretty, and the thing, the crazy part about Yoda is he can just do. He's just got like a second gear, like you know, he's got like a fifth gear that he right. just like you just switch can't on. Me. Yeah, just, dude's next well, level. There's a there's an animated series on the Clone Wars um, that came out on. Well, there's, there's actually a ton of <laughs> Clone War animated series, but there's one for the, like the Cartoon Network, and he literally like there's like a like a bunch of ships flying in, and he just like takes one ship and like uses the Force and like brings it into another ship, and it's just like that's that's some pretty serious power right there. Mm -hmm. Who would you say yours is? Uh, it's weird because I would say Anakin, but it's just like. Anakin when he's Anakin. That's a good point. Like, Anakin when he's Anakin. Like, his yeah. full... His Before full he falls, movie. right. Yeah, I don't know what it is. It's just like... I don't know. It just seems like something I would do in life. Be, like, late to getting to that point. Mm -hmm. You know, of... Learn, like, I'm a late learner... Maybe oh well, again, for me, kind of again thing. in another video I mentioned like uh, I think it was the same video I was like talking about my droid and stuff, dude. I don't I don't know if I would make it as like a like a Jedi or like one of these things like uh, like even like these these guys with like these laser pistols and stuff like like I don't know, man. Like Finn and all these guys, I think I would just be working in like like one of these shops down here, like just kind of like hauling freighter stuff around. Like there's I don't know, man. I don't know if I would make it out there. That's some that's some crazy crazy intense intense stuff yeah yeah so i don't know i just his journey too like he's kind of just like a stubborn dude kind of doesn't like authority you know right oh, i wish i could I walk over here where he was just like you know they told him not to go and he just like gets pissed off at windu and stuff and i'm just like right. that's probably how i would be <laughs> my girl man that's my girl man too right i'm just like just checking out these uh these guys, Im Imperial TIE fighters flying all around. It's very, very, very creepy. I don't want to like move on to the next part of this game because once I do, it's going to like take away this like free walk that I have going around. So I'm just kind of like looking at some of the same stuff as we just kind of like continue to talk about. I guess I talked about Star Wars. It's really cool. Um, the uh, There's some cool specials and it's funny like your sister and I like we were we were snapping about uh, Falcon Winter Soldier while that was going on, and, and then that ran out. And I'm like, oh, well, you need to check out like the behind the scenes of like WandaVision. That's really cool. And there's like a new one on the Falcon Winter Soldier. And she's like, oh, I've, I've seen the WandaVision one. And I'm like, all right, all right. Well, there's a cool special on Disney's Galaxy's Edge. You, you need to watch that. And she's like, oh, we watched that last week. <laughs> <laughs> She's up on all these specials, but there are some cool, like, I kind of feel like I'm walking around Galaxy's Edge right now, um, and just, like, this cool little, like, amusement park, like, at nighttime, like, uh, Galaxy's Edge here. I've never been there. 
it's insane. I, like I was watching the special today, man, and like there's people like like going through for the first time, and they're just like in tears and overwhelmed. And it's it's like that. Like I, I'm not gonna lie, uh, especially when we were just there in January and we got to do um, the new Rise of the Resistance ride. Like both of us walked off of the ride with just like you know tears in our eyes. It was just like so overwhelming. There's like a part, you know, where you feel like you're actually looking out on a space battle. And you've got cannons going off right next to you, and it's just like so incredible, um, like the amount of detail. And it's one of those things too. Like you kind of look at, like I said, these, these documentaries and how this stuff is put together, and you realize like these these people who put this stuff together, you know, they are the fans, and they are like they grew up with it themselves, and so they treat it, you know, with the respect that you know any fan would have. Oh, yeah, um, but they sure. do it to a, a degree that, like, as a fan, I don't know if I would even think of some of the stuff that these people put together. And I think that's what's so overwhelming is that, you know, like I said, there's there's things in, in Star Wars for everybody. And uh, what they did at that park, when you walk in, you're just like, oh, my gosh, they did this. Oh, my gosh, they did that. And uh, it's just, I don't know, it's just, it's it's really incredible. But it's it's, it's amazing, man. Like I said, before Star Wars, there wasn't really anything. I don't even think like this. Like, I don't think anything exists like Star Wars before Star Wars. But now, like, you have so many different franchises uh, with, like, different, like, Marvel movies and, you know, um, even horror movies and different things like that. Like, you know, you might have, like, like I guess Dracula and, and Frankenstein had big franchises early on. But uh, nothing, nothing quite like this where it's just, like, completely outside, just a whole new... Imagination of a whole new station. world, and right. I almost missed this old rig. You got reassigned too. Yeah. I was like, I was watching some specials earlier today, and this is uh, this is, this is crazy to put it in these kind of numbers. So like, apparently back before Star Wars, the most money Fox Studios made was like thirty-seven million dollars in one year, or something like that. Mm -hmm. When Star Wars came out, their profit that year was like $79 million. Sheesh. And that was Star Wars. Like, almost double... Or double. Like, double the, the profit of what they did the previous year. It's just insane, dude. It's, uh... Especially once Disney's involved and stuff. I mean, it's just... Oh, yeah, they got, like, so many series coming out now, too. That's going to be crazy yeah. to watch. But yeah, I, I remember... Uh, like, It's funny, like, you know, I'm gearing up, like, oh, yeah, like, I need a reason to watch Star Wars. Uh, but I think, like, you've come over before for different May the 4th. Oh, definitely. Yeah, um, we have. Celebrations that I've had in the past. And just, I've been like, yeah, I'm watching Star Wars all day, man. you got to come over. And you, know, you just, like, pop just over. and day. Yeah, just, like... Oh yeah, who knows which one is on now? But it's to the point where like I, you know, I'm kind of gearing up and doing these videos all weekend. But you have to like start watching this stuff like May the second <laughs> because there is if you want to get them all in. Yeah, yeah. If you, there is so much stuff you gotta. Yeah, you gotta watch, man. It's crazy. Yeah, it's. I'm amazed how busy this station I know is. always on like I think it's TBS. TBS is the always I think they need to starting keep the fleet running now more than ever. Like literally May fourth at 12 a.m. Mm -hmm. From 12 p.m. or 12 a.m. the next day, they've got uh, Star Wars on all day. That's it's awesome. just every single one of them. Yeah. Well, it's funny. Uh, I mentioned like again when we went to um, uh, to, to Disney for this last trip. Uh, <laughs> we were going to the Hollywood Studios, the whole like you know Star Wars part uh, for my birthday, and then I think the next day they had like a marathon on. Um, for Star Wars as well. Oh, wait, got my... Oh, I got my timer going off. Tell me we got to wrap this up here in a second. But yeah, they had like Star Wars on all the next day. I was like, oh, we're going to miss it. And uh, I don't think we did. I think we got home. Like we went to... Um, it's either the next day or the day after. But we went to like Epcot for the day. And by the time we got back, I mean, there was like still like... We were like halfway through. Um, I think they had... I think it was... Force Awakens and then The Last Jedi. Those were the last two they were running in the marathon, and we caught the the middle of Force Awakens and uh, fell asleep watching The Last Jedi before you know we hit the Disney parks again. But yeah, that was just a cool like 
You know, no matter where you go, no matter what's going on, like, oh, there's Star Wars, it's playing. Yeah. I just, I just went to Star Wars, and now I get to watch my Star Wars. And it's so funny. You talk about, uh, real quick, how you kind of like you see one set, like whether it's the prequels or whether it's this or whatever, and then you want to go back and watch the other stuff. You know, you watch Mandalorian. Right. Oh well, let me go back and watch the original. Like it's just you just you want more the more you watch it. And it's funny every time we go to Disney, we always have these moments where it's like. Oh well, let's watch the Disney movies before we go to Disney, or let's watch some Star Wars before we go to Disney, and then we get to Disney and we ride these rides and we do all this stuff, and then I get home, and all I want to do is watch more Star Wars. <laughs> it's like this very sick, uh, uh, addictive cycle that you just cannot, cannot escape. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm gonna play some Lego Star Wars. Tower. Yeah. You ready? For sure. Yeah, I think I still got mine. See you up top. Somewhere around here. I'm gonna have to just find. The only problem is I'm gonna have to find my GameCube. Uh, the the GameCube like auxiliary cables because it's not you know it's not a you uh not just an HDMI. I have I have an extra set. Oh, do you? I have an extra set of cables. GameCube? Yeah. Because it's it's, it's the same set that goes to the uh, really Super so Nintendo. <laughs> Dude, I'm so I've got, yeah, yeah, totally, totally, yeah. I've, I've got you. Because I do have the uh, thing that connects, it, it trans, you know, it, the adapter that changes it from HDMI to whatever, mm -hmm. you, you know what I'm talking about. Yellow, right. red, right. and right. white. Those are right. And then you gotta, you can switch it over from that, but yeah, 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 no, I've got an extra set, dude. I gotta do that. Absolutely. Uh-oh, I got, oh no. Let me see. Oh, no, no, no. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, he's out here. All right, let's go ahead and wrap this up um, while the alarm's going off. I think that's a good signal for me to go ahead and, and wrap this up. But it's been a lot of fun just hanging out, talking about Star Wars. I got more videos uh, coming this way as we um, get into uh, May the 4th and continue to celebrate. Uh, thanks for hanging out with me, Holden. Yeah, dog. It's fun, dude. Always. And uh, may the force be with you. Force be with you. And uh, don't forget, guys, to like, comment, subscribe, share, all that jazz. And until uh, next time, don't spend your quarter anywhere else. You got it. <laughs> Alright, guys. Later. Oh, shoot. I'm gonna die. Oh, okay. Don't die.